we're going to do color pencil shading. Okay. Um, we're going to apply the, all the same principles that we talked about with graphite shading in terms of hand pressure and working from dark to light and establishing the light source and uh, all those other things. Okay. Um, if we were doing things sitting on a surface, we would also still worry about reflective light um, and shadows. We're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to do these as if these are like floating orbs in the air. Okay. If I'm going to make a blue sphere, all right, I'm going to use minimum at least these colors. Okay. Now, some people might be looking at it and saying, like, why in God's name is orange in there? Orange is in there because you want to always shade, all right, meaning darken a color with its contrast. Right? So when you look at the color wheel, whatever color is opposite of another color, that's its contrast. Okay? So orange is opposite of blue. So when we want to darken blue, we're going to use orange. Okay? And that will make sense a little bit. Um, I'm not going to use just one shade of blue. I'm going to, I'm going to vary my, my colors that I'm using. This is actually a, a violet, an indigo blue. Um, this is a what's called a peacock blue. All right. This is a cerulean blue. This is a light cerulean blue, and then white. Okay. There's a lot of different blues that you can use. Um, as long as you're using multiples of them, you'll be fine. Okay. So, what we're going to do. All right, if I'm going to do this sphere here, and I'm going to say that the light source is coming in this direction. Okay, so what I'm going to start with is my darker blue. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing that I did with graphite shading. Okay, I'm going to use small circular strokes. I'm going to go opposite my light source because this is going to be floating. I don't have to worry about working in the reflective light. All right. work in that dark and then I'm going to treat it the same as I do the graphite all right and I'm going to come out and establish a couple different values with this one blue okay so I'm going to gradually come out gradually lighten my pressure working towards the light I don't want to go all the way up okay and if I was making like a really dark blue I would I would pull this further but I just want to pull it up you know through three or four values worth, okay, as I come around. So again, small circular strokes, but I'm working with that semicircular contour to start to bring this thing into, from a flat shape to a three-dimensional form, okay? Now I work in my next one, all right, the next blue I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna go right back over those other values, all right? I might even work back into my dark, my darkest dark, all right, I'm just going to repeat the, the same process with this one. All right, and I'm just going to come a little bit further out with this. So I start a little bit further out and I go a little bit further. Again, just lightening my pressure, controlling how much of the color is getting on the page. Okay. It's a little trickier with the color because it's hard to undo something. All right, so I go back in with the next blue. Same thing. Start a little further out. Blend it. Using small circular strokes, I blend it with the other one. Next blue, so I'm gonna sharpen this. Sorry, the lights went off. And going with the next blue. I apologize for the lights going off. I was sitting still for too long, so that's what happens. 
Okay, so now that I'm at my lightest blue, what I can do is I can start working not only into my light area, but I can work backwards and I can press a little harder. So what we've done so far is we've done what's commonly referred to as glazing. All right, really is more of a painting term, but same idea where we're gradually adding color over top of other colors. All right, when I go back over it a little harder, then it's, it's called burnishing. Okay, now at this point, I wanna build up my darks a little bit, so I'm gonna go in just a little bit with a violet, right? Really any purple will work, right? And when you're doing this, you can use any colors that are around another color on the color wheel <clears throat> to shade that color, okay? Now as I go in with the orange, all right, you'll see how this will make a really dark dark, hopefully. zoom in for you just a little bit so you can see a little bit more all right but as we go I don't want to go really hard with it right I just want to make that dark pop all right and what I'm what's happening is I'm creating what's called a semi-neutral all right I'm only going to work it in my dark maybe a little bit further than my my darkest dark right I'm creating a semi-neutral semi-neutral is a mixture of two colors that makes a neutral color, but it, it leans to one side or the other. So if we're mixing orange and blue, all right, and it's we're making basically a brown that leans to the blue side because there's the more blue there, right? Now I can work, depending on what I've got, right? I've got like a really harsh line for my dark right now. So I want to take these other darker ones and really lightly start bringing that out and soften that edge a little bit. Okay, so it's a constant going back over stuff, gradually building, okay? Now, if I'm using white, all right, and I can just rely on the white of the paper, but I can also use the white as sort of like a blending tool, right? If I go back into this, this edge here, this lighter value, I go over it with the white, see how it pulls those colors together a little bit? All right, and this is where that idea of burnishing comes in, where you work over top of it. Now, burnishing can be dangerous because it's really hard to undo something now. All right, you're really building up like a lot of waxy buildup when you start burnishing, okay? But some people really like the look of burnished, all right? Some people really like the look of more of a grainy, just glazed color, okay? But that's basically what we're trying to do. We're trying to build that up. Now, as I look at this, right, you can see a pretty hard line here and a pretty hard line here. So I would wanna go back into these and just keep working real lightly over those areas just to try to smooth out the transition because we don't want any hard edges anywhere in here, okay? But that's basically the idea of the pencil, or of the uh, color pencil shading, okay? So as you guys do this, all right, I want you to do several different colors, all right? I want you to use as many different shades, uh, tints and shades, tints being lighter versions, shades being darker versions, and make sure you're using the opposite, the contrast of whatever color you're using, okay? So if you're using, if you're making orange, all right, this orange sphere has blue in it. This blue sphere has orange in it. This purple sphere has yellow in it. All right, if I was making a yellow sphere, I'd put a little bit of purple in it, all right? But again, you're, you're using a little bit of that contrast, okay, and then gradually working up to where you want it to be, okay? If I was making a red or a green square, or, or red or green sphere, I would put red or green in it, all right? So if it's red, I would put some green in the dark. If it was green, I would put some red in the dark, okay? Um, and again, whatever's around it, like if I'm making an orange square, I can use red, I can use orange, I can use yellow, I can use yellow orange, I can re use red orange, all right, along with that blue to make my orange sphere. Okay, so you want to expand, you know, we're talking about this being, you know, the minimum of seven colors to make this one sphere. Okay, 
So that's what you want to do. Use as much as you can. If you're limited in color, all right, with what you have at home, then obviously, you know, we got to work through that. But whatever you do have, just work through it. And then when we get back into class, we can always add to it. Okay. All right. If you guys have any questions or anything, just shoot me a text. All right.